Hello and welcome to this special video recording. This is the Casablanca Experts Introduction to Casablanca Video Editing. Well, who's the Casablanca Expert? That would be me. My na name is Chet Davis, and I have a website called CasablancaExpert.com. On that website, you'll find more than 600 articles, tutorials, tips, streaming videos, information to help you get the most out of your Casablanca video editor. Now, if you're watching me at home, I'm going to ask you, raise your hand if you've used a Casablanca video editor before. All right? Uh, go ahead and raise your hand if this is the first time you've ever heard about the Casablanca video editor. All right, you can put your hands down. I can't really see anyway, but I wanted to make this somewhat interactive. What's going to happen today? We're, we're going to spend 30 minutes together as I give you an overview, a very basic introduction to the capabilities, the capacities, the features in today's Casablanca video editor. This is by no means a thorough teaching of today's Casablanca. This is not intended to make you extremely well versed to to be a you know high end professional video editor on the Casablanca. It's just an introduction to the capabilities of today's Casablanca, so you can take a look and see if this platform, if this system is of is is, is of uh, you know importance. Uh, if it jives with what you need to do, whether you do video for a hobby, for your family video, for your travel video, maybe you do video for your church or synagogue. Maybe you do video for a community and nonprofit agency. Maybe you do video with students or in a school environment. Or perhaps you're a professional whose full-time capacity relates to video, whether you're a wedding and event videographer, whether you're a videographer who works for a, a, a cable TV station, LP TV station. Uh, maybe you do video in a, in a non-broadcast environment for corporate video, etc. The Casablanca may be the ideal tool for you. What I'm going to show you today is the construction, the creation of a very short video project so you get a sense of the workflow, of the capabilities of the current uh, version of Casablanca. Casablanca started about 10 years ago and was the first digital nonlinear video editing system in a box, a totally self-contained unit that didn't require you figuring out how to connect a computer and, and, and all the different components. It was also the very first nonlinear system, and so many people were surprised who came from tape-based editing, otherwise known as linear-based editing, whether you were doing A-B cuts or, or, or straight cut-to-cut. Uh, and it facilitated some really cool capabilities in the ability to storytell with digital technology tools. Let's take a look at, at, at today's Casablanca. Here's the rear of the unit. Um, and the Casablanca units I'm talking about today is, uh, is the Casablanca S3000 and the S6000. Both are virtually identical outside. It's, it's the hard drive space and the processor that differentiate the two, uh, two specific models. Now, when, when we look at the back of the Casablanca, you get a sense uh, of, of what's possible in terms of inputs and outputs. What's nice about this, even though the system is, is capable and able to import and edit the contemporary camcorders that you find available for purchase now that do the HDV, that do the AVC HD, that do the MOV files, you have to have a very powerful computer or dedicated computer, which is a Casablanca, to be able to import and process these images. It's nice that, and Casablanca is fairly unique in, in this arena, that it also allows you to bring in what I call legacy footage, the video footage that was shot maybe two years ago or eight or 10 or 15 years ago, and you want to incorporate that. So you can see on the back of the Casablanca, here's an S-Video port. This is S-Video in, so we can bring in the S-Video signal from um, S-VHS uh, or from Hi8, et cetera. We have uh, an analog video port, the yellow RCA phono connector here, for bringing in analog video. Believe it or not, if you've got a VHS deck sitting around and you can get that baby to lock, uh, you know, stable on the signal, then you can play that back and use that footage as well in your Casablanca. And then there's analog audio input, left and right channel RCA phono ports to bring in analog video audio, uh, whether that's with your video track or you can even connect a, you know, a, a CD player um, or uh, the output of an audio mixer via these, uh, these ports here. You also have a variety of uh, digital ports. Here we have a six-pin Firewire port. And on the front of the editor is a four-pin Firewire or DV port. And that allows you to connect either a DV camera or deck or an 
HDV camera deck, high definition video, so it will import those files as well, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Then there's a multiplicity of other uh, connectors. Some of them are used or some are not. We have a, um, an RJ45 jack, which is where you would connect Ethernet. So you can actually connect today's Casablanca in a local area network and share files from your Windows PC over to Casablanca and from your Casablanca over to the Windows PC. And a great number of USB ports. That's where you would connect your trackball mouse. You would connect your USB keyboard for typing in the titles. And also where you would connect your uh, USB uh, storage devices, whether it's an external hard drive uh, or a USB flash drive or a thumb drive or a jump drive, as, as, as jump drive as some people call them. And that's how we can bring in fonts. We can bring in photos. We can bring in logos. And we can bring in video files, which is very, very nice. Uh, there are some cameras you can connect directly that have an uh, internal uh, hard drive or use flash media to store the content, but more of them work more successfully using a card drive that you take the flash card out of your camera, plug it into the card reader or a card drive, and connect that via USB port to your Casablanca. On the far left, what we have over here is two monitor options. We have DVI and we have HDMI, and it's these ports. You would select one of these, and you would connect that to your high resolution, high definition monitor screen in your uh, home office, your edit studio, uh, or even your uh, home entertainment system. You can be editing on your big uh, 56 inch flat panel monitor. Okay? So those are the options for connecting. You also have power uh, on the front. We have USB ports. Um, we also have the uh, FireWire port, as I mentioned, as well. So that gives you a, a snapshot, a sense of, of how you connect it. But what I'd like to do now. Is, is actually show you my device. So I'm going to bring up my webcam. And what you're looking at is you're looking at the home screen, the main menu from the Casablanca S3000 running the Bogart version 4 operating system. And uh, if you've been with Casablanca for a long time, the nice thing about this, uh, as an educator, we call this uh, transferable skills. You're probably very familiar already with the menu layout, so you can take those skills that you know that comfort factor you have in terms of being successful and efficient, and directly apply that in the S3000 or the S6000. So uh, they may be in a slightly different location, but the buttons, the functions, still have uh, pretty much the same capacity. But make no mistake, the system's been totally reworked under the hood, and it's now on what we call the Linux or Linux backbone. The developers moved from VXWorks. VXWorks is the old version of Casablanca, the smart edit operating system, which worked quite well with streaming video as you fed the video in. But with the great number of different file formats and the video files that have to be transferred, VXWorks just is not as powerful or capable of doing. The, the capability is one thing, but also the developers, and that means us end users using the product, benefit now from VXWorks uh, uh, being gone and the move to Linux or Linux because there's a great deal of open source programming. So we have access to a great deal more programs. For example, the Twixstore software, which is an add-on piece of software in the Bogart environment, and it allows you to do some very sophisticated motion manipulation from slow motion and fast motion to the what they call the very speed. You know, you can go at slow motion, then you can speed it up and go back to normal speed, etc. This software is available uh, uh, on competing software uh, platforms like uh, Adobe Premiere, uh, Final Cut Pro, and it is now available as well in the Casablanca uh, platform because of that open source programming, the availability of tools. And also when new cameras come out with new, new formats, the Casablanca uh, appliance can more readily be compatible with those because of its um, open source development taking advantage of the Linux or Linux code. Okay, so we're at the home screen, and, and from here you use your trackball or cursor to scroll around and, and enter a particular menu you want to work in. Well, I'm going to go ahead over here, Project Settings, and select a project, and you can see on the hard drive you have 30 different projects. Depending on uh, the system you purchase, whether it's the 500 gigabyte or a full terabyte of video, a thousand gigabytes of video. I'm going to go ahead and select a project that I don't have anything working on yet, and I'm going to go ahead and name that project, and let's call it Test, T-E-S-T, -E and I left click, OK. And then what I want to do is I want to establish and set the format. This is an important screen for me to point out, because it's nice to know that the contemporary Casablanca will handle 
the most common different video resolutions or file formats, whether you're working the standard def 720 by 480, maybe you have a DV camcorder and you still use it a lot, or, or one of your clients brings in footage and you need or want to utilize that legacy footage, that older footage in the system. You could do 720 by 480, and the nice thing is you can establish it as a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, or you can go to a 16 by 9. I'm going to go 16 by 9, and the camera I'm using, a, a Canon HV20 today, that was 1920 by 1080. That's the native resolution of the camera. And I want to match that in my system. I am using interlace footage rather than progressive. And that's a whole other conversation. But I just want to point out that the system is capable of, of providing you an edited project in a progressive mode or an interlace mode. My footage is interlaced, so I keep that set on interlace, and I left click OK. So I've established the project. Then I'm going to come over here and show you the edit window where we're going to do our project work and you can see it's empty. I want to bring in some footage so I left click on the record screen and I begin the tape transport. I have my camcorder connected via Firewire and I click playback and it will actually start playing back the videotape. And I see the videotape and it tells me it's an HD signal. See this in the upper left corner? If this was a standard def file it would indicate SD. I simply left click on the record button and now it's recording the footage. I've chosen uh, to tell the Casablanca not to show me the video file while it's recording. Okay, And I left click stop on that. So I've stopped the camcorder. OK. Now that's an interesting focus, isn't it? Or lack thereof. There we go. OK. So I, I tell the camera to stop. And what we have is we come back and we see the uh, the the video file here, okay. And I'm going to go ahead now and um, play that back for you, so you can see we have uh, approximately 13 seconds of this video recorded. And there's a little bit of a time shift on the webcam, so that's not uh, the editor. That's just has to deal with the with the webinar technology. So I just wanted to show you how easy it is to bring in footage. Now that's bringing in footage from a file, from a connector. That's a FireWire or DV connector. If I wanted to bring footage in via USB connection, which is again how we bring in footage from most of the contemporary cameras, here's how we do that. We would left click on the USB icon and it shows us our files. And what I have is it's showing you I have a Kingston Data Traveler USB flash drive attached and here's the various files on there. Now I do have a file that is this uh, MOV file. Well, here's a prettier one. Here's a, a clouds background. Now this is a royalty free clip I found on the internet and I want to incorporate that in my project. And I left click OK and it's going to begin to import that file into the Casablanca video editor. You know what? I selected another one as well, didn't I? So let's say I did that on purpose to show you that you can bring in a variety of files all at the same time. What I meant to do is to select only one, okay? And when I left click OK, there we go. Now we are importing that one specific file into the Casablanca. Although this is a royalty-free background clip, this is the same process for bringing in uh, video files from your flip camera or your Kodak Play camera, uh, from bringing in video files uh, from your file-based uh, video camera. For example, if you're working with a Canon 5D or a Canon T2i, etc. This is the same procedure for any of the file based cameras. And it's very nice to see how smooth, how efficient it is to be able to bring these video files over from my computer or my camera device into the Casablanca and incorporate that uh, with other video clips that are brought in via streaming video. Of course, you can do a whole project just with these MOV clips as well. Once the screen disappears, you come over to your edit bin, and there we have the file, uh, a nice, clean, HD clip from an MOV file or a, or a QuickTime file. Okay, so that's how easy it is to bring footage in. What I want to do now is come over to a project I've set up previously for this lesson today. And this is an HD file. And again, you can see 1920 by 1080, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. 
and it is an interlace project just like we uh, uh, showed you a moment ago in terms of importing footage. But I've taken the liberty of, an, uh, of importing all this footage prior to the lesson today. So here we have Oregon uh, 2010. So this was shot uh, in the summer of 2010 on family vacation. And you can see down here, it's 12 minutes, 23 seconds, and 19 frames. So this is kind of a little view screen. When I click on any clip, you can see the, the little view screen, the identifier here, tells me uh, the, the length of time of that clip. And also, I can begin to play it back. So by clicking this playback button, this triangle on the bottom right corner, it begins playing back that file. Okay. So this is the raw footage. This is the, the huge percentage of, of different clips that I shot using this video camera uh, while on summer vacation in Oregon. Uh, this particular footage in the uh, Columbia River Gorge and some of the beautiful waterfalls there. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Now, a, a logical question a lot of people ask at this point in time is, okay, Chet, how did you get that one scene that you imported from your camera into all the separate components or separate pieces? Well, as long as you're using uh, a contemporary camera and bring the footage in either via file base or uh, via FireWire, DV cable, it will allow you to split that footage up using the auto split function. You simply come here to split and left click on auto and it says where would you like that? Okay? And when you click OK, it will break it up into all the separate pieces that uh, were created on that same file or with that same camera, that recording session. Okay? Now I've taken the advantage of um, um, using some of the newer functions in the Casablanca operating system and that's one to manage a longer video project much more efficiently uh, in terms of time efficiency and that's accessed by clicking this option button down here in the bottom right corner and I've already identified a group I've created a group called best you might call them highlights uh, if you do weddings you might have one that's called uh, reception, one that's called um, ceremony, etc. Uh, and this enables me to identify and to categorize different scenes to make better use of my time when it comes to the final edit. And I'm just going to select best by placing a check mark here and left clicking OK. And now the Casablanca will only show me those files that I have previously identified as the best files is kind of the highlights. Isn't that cool? Very nice. Another piece of feedback is you look at the little icons up on top of each scene. And this little triangle shows me at a very quick glance which of these have been trimmed or edited. If you're newer to video, what is trimming? Let me click on a scene and let you know. Okay? I click on a scene and come down here and click on the trim button. This lets me trim or shorten that scene or lengthen that scene by the end point the IN when it begins and when it ends which we call the out point so you have an in point and an out point okay that enables me to trim a scene to cut out content maybe that's uh, out of focus or there's too much movement uh, and, and a lot of times frankly it's just to fit a specific time requirement in my story so what I'm going to do is um, I've trimmed these scenes to the approximate length that I want and I'm going to be begin to build my little project so I'm going to start off with this scene and I add it to the storyboard. So the distinction here, the scene bin is where you have all your raw footage, the, the, the raw clips from your video camera. And only some of them, usually, will make their way up to the final presentation that your audience will see. And that comes from what we call the storyboard. Up here, this top line is the storyboard. And this is where you place the scenes you want your audience to see in the order you want your audience to see them from left to right from beginning to end so I'm gonna go ahead and start with that scene and then I'm gonna come here and add this clip next behind the first one and add a scene behind that one and then I'm gonna go ahead and add um, a shot of my wife and son at the waterfall and then a close-up of that same waterfall. Then let's go for some nature footage here. We have a, a couple shots of flowers. And we've added those in a row. And what's nice is there is a function on the Casablanca that will also help me to uh, make sure that I include the scenes that I want and avoid duplication. That's this little check mark here. So it shows me, 
Okay, Chet, these are the scenes in your scene bin that you have not chosen to use yet. So I'm going to go ahead and add that scene next. Okay, so we have a scene. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, now that I've done that, I can go ahead and, and remove the option function. And I'm going to add this black in front of the other one. Okay, and then um, cancel that and also add that video black at the very end. Okay. So uh, in, in a very short period of time, we've utilized the efficiency functions in the Bogart environment of the contemporary Casablanca to put together a very short video presentation. I can find uh, uh, now the next step is we can go ahead and add our titles and our transitions. So let's go ahead and add an opening title. I'm going to use uh, this function in the basic set. You can see that there's a number of, of sets, and each one of these has a variety of different parameters depending on the kind of title that you're creating and using. Okay, so um, I'm going to add this title here, and I click on Enter Edit Text, and I'm going to change that from the uh, title that we now see into a uh, title that's going to be entirely my own. Let's call this uh, Oregon 2010. How's that for a very uh, creative title, huh? Okay. So I can use the fonts that are uh, included on the system. The other nice thing is I do have the capability of importing fonts. So if I have access to true type fonts, and you can see I've got three of them here, um, I can import these fonts right on the system. And there's a font here called Sean the Sheep, and I can adjust the size of that font. Okay? And you can see that uh, 2010 now is is built around that specific font where the other line is built around the existing font. I'm going to show you how to easily correct that in a moment. Then under style, we can go ahead and add, let's add this nice uh, deep forest green. Or if we want to be truly authentic, I can pick color from the background. So I can come over here and uh, pick some green from the trees. Click OK. And maybe I want to keep kind of that same hue but make it a bit darker. And we can establish an outline or an edge and also a drop shadow. So we have the ability. And let's make a very light drop shadow here. Okay, and you can see the drop shadow. And I can smoothen or soften that drop shadow off the edge there. Okay, very nice. Oregon 2011. Now, to copy that style and font onto the other line, I simply come down here and box is extended, copy that font and then copy that style to all lines. So in, in a very short measure, I've created uh, you know, a, a pretty cool looking title that's going to be very simple. It's just going to fade on and, and have um, you know, it, it, a simple title as it's coming on. So I'm creating or rendering this in, in high resolution. So uh, the finished piece um, will look really clean, uh, really professional, uh, high quality, at the resolution that I set the project up to begin with. And the title fades out. Now, I have an option, and it's, it's in the Casablanca. If I want to build layer upon layer, it's very easy to do. Right in that same title menu, I have the ability to do what we call a scene function. And the scene function just lets me permanize or lock that on there. So I can go back now and do another title, and another title, and another title. Very, very efficient. Now, I want to do something special down here as well and show you this newer capability in the Casablanca. Many, many people have the request and the need to insert client logos or images with their video pro project. E even if you're doing community nonprofit work, work for your church organization, perhaps you have a, a, a logo, um, a title, uh, a pre-created graphic that you want to use in your system. Today's Casablanca is capable of handling that. And I have, for example, a PNG file, which is a kind of a very specific graphic that was set up that has transparency at a very specific size. And I can select that. So watch how easy this is to do here. I can select an empty box, and I have 60 uh, folders, if you will, or 60 spaces that I can go ahead and grab an image from. And uh, now it's showing me what's on my thumb drive. So for example, I have uh, a logo here from the Winter Olympics. And I have uh, this logo here, Travel Oregon. I left click OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and use that logo. Then I simply decide where I want to position it. So I, I can position that wherever I like. If I want a bug uh, or logo in the bottom corner, 
and I can adjust the size. You can see how easy it is to do that with these two buttons, the position and size button. And I left click OK. And by left clicking OK, it will make a copy of that scene, that full motion video, with the logo on top. And you can see it's, it's got some transparency to, to the logo around the edges. So real clean, real professional, very easy way to import your graphics, your logos, your uh, graphic screens that you need to use in your video production and integrate them with the production. So now I've got this finished version that you'll see with the logo on it there in the bottom right corner. And I'm going to go ahead and replace that in the storyboard. It now becomes part of the main scene. Then I'm going to come over here to transitions and show you how easy it is. Perhaps I just want to add a simple crossfade or a dissolve to the whole storyboard. Well, I can add individually very easily and select different functions. Uh, for example, the Z1 page turn. I can do blue box or chroma key work. I can do picture in picture. But let's say I want a simple crossfader dissolve across the whole storyboard quickly and easily. I simply left click on the option button. I select add automatically and select the effect, the transition. Let's say I want to go uh, exactly one second between scenes. I left click OK and I say, yeah, go ahead and make that for me. It adds those transitions almost automatically in just a few moments. Very cool. Then I'm going to come over to the audio menus. And you see we have two different audio menus. The, audio, the menu where we bring audio in. So what I want to do is I want to um, put um, uh, music onto my finished piece. So I put in uh, royalty free music CD. I happen to use music to hues. And I let the disk uh, be read in the drive. And then I click this button here. And this button allows me to import the file from the disk onto the hard drive. And I say, yeah, display the contents that are in here. And then I could listen to particular tracks, but I've pre-selected this one. And now this is a good one. And I left click OK. And now 12 times faster than real time, it'll download that file into my internal hard drive off the CD. So once that's on there, I can pull the CD out. And it will read both WAV files as well as MP3 files. We also have the ability, I'm not going to show you today, but we also have the ability to export your audio files. So you can make audio CDs for your audience as well of the different productions. I can come over here now, and I can trim that audio file just like we trimmed the video files. But if I want to quickly add it, I simply go to the Audio Mix menu. And it's here that I have the ability to see the multiple tracks. So I have the original audio that came in with the camera and then I want to add the music track below it. So I'm simply going to click on this track and left click the add button. Then it brings up the choices. Okay Chet, which of the clips you've brought in do you want to add here? I've only brought one in so it makes the selection very easy. I left click OK and now it has placed that music track beneath the video samples. Now here's a very quick, nice button as well. If I only want the music to come through on this collage or montage, this short video, I can easily mute the top track. Okay? By clicking here, I have instantly muted or silenced the original audio so that only my music will come through. Then I can adjust the overall volume. I want this to be background music. I can come over here and left click and add a, a one second fade in and a one second fade out. And then I would simply create or render that. And I have a finished piece complete with music. Now the whole thing, what I, uh, I'm going to do, uh, de depends if I want to take this out to disk, if I'm taking this out as a stream to a, uh, uh, to a back to a camera or to a deck, or am I going to print this to disk, or am I going to upload this to the internet? These choices here depend on what you want to do. I'm going to go to the finish window and just show you this. I left click the create or render button. Now it's going to finalize the footage. The, the, the finished footage uh, that I have is, is now able to kind of render in with the transitions and the titles and the graphics and, and, and the audio and kind of wrap the whole thing up if you will. Okay. So it, it's created or rendered that. If you're going to take it out as an HDV file, okay, you would do an additional render. It's rendering both the SD file, and you saw how quickly that happens, but the HD file, because of the extremely high resolution, it does take a little bit longer to do that. But the system is fully capable of doing the finalized rendering on a true HDV file and putting out true 
high definition, 1920 by 1080. But let me show you how easy it is if I want to take this to the internet. Maybe I want to upload this to my YouTube channel. Maybe I want to upload this to my Vimeo channel. Um, maybe I want to upload this uh, to a client's website. This is how easy it is to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a scene of the whole thing. So I've got a finished video, and I click on the info button, and it shows me it runs 53 seconds and 20 frames. I go to one of the three effects menus, transition, image processing, or titling, and I'm going to make a scene of the finished piece. So I'm going to call this final. Oops. F-I-N-A-L. And I left click OK. And then I just simply select the whole storyboard, the whole project, and in an instant, it's created that for me. Now I'm not seeing it. Why? Because I have the filter turned on. So I simply say, show me all the scenes in the scene bin, including final. So this video right here, when I trim through it, is the video from start to finish with all the different scenes, the titles, the transitions, and there you see the PNG graphic in the bottom right corner. Now I'm going to export that and upload that to the internet. So I click the option button here and I left click on export actual scene I tell it where I want to export it to and I left click OK and now it is re-rendering that file converting that into an AVI file which the internet video hosting websites love and work very smoothly and easily with okay? and that's ready for importing to the internet I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that so we can go on with them um, uh, the finished part of our presentation. Thanks for joining me today. If you have questions about the Casablanca Digital Video Editor, uh, consult, contact your Casablanca dealer or Macro System US. Their website is www.macrosystem.us. You can reach them by phone at 303-440-5311. Once you have your Casablanca and you're looking for additional training, uh, some supplementary information to really help your editor sing, I invite you to join the community at CasablancaExpert.com. Again, that's my website with a wealth of resources, training materials. We have live webinars, um, uh, streaming video recordings to help you get the most out of your digital video editor. Thanks for joining me today.